And joining me back in the show, in the studio today, is the awesome Steph Johnston from Barnabas Aid. Hello, my friend. Hello, kia ora. How's it? Good to see you. Good, good. Um, I won't tell the listeners, except I'm going to tell them now. You were just doing a little bit of rapping off here. I did, I did. Well, we were doing a sound check, and I was thinking, what other way to do a sound check than a little rap? I've actually not had anyone come in and do that. Spitting some game. Yo! <laughs> hey now. <laughs> this woman's got hidden talents that are no no longer hidden. Next time she might have to do it all on the mic. Come on, bring have, it. Have a bit of fun. We talk about serious things, right? But yeah. we can have some fun with it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So today talking about a part of the world, um, we, we're always talking about the persecuted church when Steph's with me and talking about a part of the world which many people will know. In fact, a friend of mine a few years ago went there for her 10th wedding anniversary. Just so beautiful. The Maldives, which is like this tropical paradise. It's is it in the Indian Ocean or Yeah, Indian yeah. Ocean, kind of southwestish from Sri Lanka. Kind of the best way to describe where it's at without yeah. showing you on a map. Yeah, and yeah. so there's all these resorts there. That, oh, beautiful resorts. Um, you like can, over the water yeah. where you can just like dive straight in. Yeah, and maybe just fish off the end and, oh, you know, yeah. just roll over when you get hot and splash into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Just, sounds like a perfect holiday, it right? It does sound like a perfect holiday, except that, well, that's going on. But for Christians, that's a really uh, pretty awful part of the world to be in, Steph. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, it's one of the most repressive Muslim countries to be a Christian because there's literally, um, it's a 100% Muslim country, like 100%. There's a very, very tiny um, amount of Christians who are there, but most of the Christians that would be there would be uh, migrants, uh, some from Sri Lanka, uh, India, that kind of thing. And then also some who have converted, but that gets really, really hard. If you convert in a wholly Muslim country, it's literally illegal. So yeah, uh, you're looking at jail time for being a Christian in the Maldives. Wow. So I mean, you can't be any kind of religion there other than Muslim. Is That's, that right? Yeah, they've got a, they've, it's actually a law that it's a religious unity is what they call it. But um, they won't allow you to be a citizen uh, if you're not a Muslim. So that's there's that. So it is completely 100% Muslim and guided by Sharia law, which is Muslim law. Mm. So I'm thinking, I mean, my friend who, uh, you, you can't even have a Bible there, is that right? Yes, you, if you have a Bible in your home, you can face imprisonment. Oh, yeah, they've actually, we've had stories covered in our um, website and on the in the magazine where uh, if the people who've gotten caught with a Bible have but been put in jail. Um, now, tourists, uh, I did look that up on, in regards to tourism because I was like, well, can you even take a Bible in? And so as a tourist, if you're going to uh, the Maldives as a you know holiday, you can take a Bible, but it's, you know, you have to be careful. You'd probably read it in your room. You wouldn't read it out anywhere. But I was reading this website, and here's where it classifies the Bible along with these other things. It's illegal to import explosives, weapons, firearms, ammunition, drugs. In addition, the importation of material deemed contrary to Islam, uh, such as pornography, pork, pork products, alcohol, idols for worship, Bibles, Josh. and non-Islamic religious, religious text is also illegal. So you can't import Bibles into... Um, and it's it, what I found with that is that it's in those like with drugs and alcohol and yeah, firearms... You know, that kind of thing. So that's where the Bible sits in regards to um, the country and what they, how they are so strict on their Muslim uh, religious principles. That is just so full on. I mean, I love my Bible. I'm, Same. I'm, I take it everywhere. I, I'm emotionally connected to my Bible. I was talking to the audience the other day because the, the cover of my Bible's fallen apart and someone's like, oh, you could buy a new one. It's like, no, we go back to in my 20s. I have history. Yeah. If I go away on holiday, my Bible is a bit big, but I feel lost without it, mm. even if I don't read it every day. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just so crucial to my connection yeah. to God, my faith. It's just something that we here take for granted. Yeah, we, we really do. I mean, you think if you... Thinking of Bible as being caught with a Bible in your house, I would be convicted a million times over because I have so many Bibles in my house. So to think of a country that isn't um, doesn't let you freely have things like that is pretty crazy. Mm. And I'm the same as you. My Bible goes everywhere with me. I'm not reading it or bashing people it's, over the head with like it. It's like your cuddly, right? It's yeah, like it's like having your little cuddly yeah, blanket. It's my I, Bible. And even though I can read my Bible on my phone, I still prefer to read 
the Bible Bible. Yeah, I'm, so I'm the same. Weird like that. No, I'm totally the same. <laughs> I'm old-fashioned. I'm with you. But I'm thinking if people there, like, could they be reading the Bible on their phone or could they would they track stuff like that as well? I reckon they – I don't know for sure if they would track it. I don't think it's as repressive as, say, like China or something like that with their monitoring of religious activities. But um, I definitely – don't think you could just be reading it in public, like I said. And, and for me, like we talked about having your Bible, I often will read mine in a cafe. Um, and, and even on vacations, when I've taken holidays, I've been like, I'll go down to the lounge, you know, the public area and read my Bible there. You know, you couldn't do that in Maldives. You couldn't just rock around with your Bible um, preaching or proselytizing. Heck no, that would never happen. Mm. Can I say heck on the radio? You said it. Oh, yeah, sorry about that, <laughs> listeners. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Put a quarter in the swear jar. Yeah, so they'd be put in prison for for trying to, um, it'd be a criminal offence as well, wouldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. To try and preach or even just you got a friend over for dinner and you might share your faith. Yeah, you can't do it. Uh-uh. Even worshipping, like they don't even, I think there might be one church for migrants, but it's not really, as far as I know and what I've read, you can't have public worship services. I mean, you'd have to be real sneaky about it and real quiet about it. Mm. Um, whereas we can freely go to church on a Sunday morning and, you know, be all, all good. It's not an issue. So it's interesting thinking of a country like that where most people look at it as so beautiful, which it is. And I'm not trying to kill tourism for Maldives at all. Trust me, I'm not. It's a beautiful <laughs> place. If I had an opportunity to go, I might consider it. But when you think about how repressed Christianity is there... Um, you know, you just, it makes you kind of think, oh, is that a country that I do want to go to, you mm, know? That I do want to support. Yeah, with yeah, my yeah. tourism. But yeah. but like I said, I don't want to kill tourism there. No, but no. I want us to be aware of what's going on in yeah. these countries that are so, like, so luxurious. And, yeah, there's, it's a facade, yeah, isn't it? It's totally. sort of like when yeah. you go to um, Movie World or Universal Studios, you know, mm. and you see the front of the Bates Motel or something, and you go around the back and yeah. it's just sort of sticks holding it up. Yeah. It's like a, a pretty face pretty for the face. world. And then behind the scenes, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But I yeah. always, I'm just, you know, when you hear stories of people like that, because there are Christians there, you just think, wow, you're so brave. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. But then if we went there, we were like, well, I couldn't change who I am because... Jesus is in my DNA. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. Like, I'm not going to stop loving God, but whatever happens. They would expect you to be respectful of their culture. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't suggest that anybody go over there and just start preaching on a corner. Oh, no. You know, but it, I feel you. I would want to, I wouldn't want to repress that. But it's interesting because a lot of, you know, when you ban something to that degree, a lot of people are instantly, you know, how you're like, don't it. smell this and then yeah. you smell it, you know? Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where, Despite the oppression and how um, against any other religion this country is, there's still people who are Christians there, and it still grows in countries like that, which is amazing, the power of the Holy it? Spirit, right? It totally is. I mean, you can't hold back Jesus from people's and, lives. And when you think about it, you're, you're living in a culture which is oppressed. So there's something in a person that mm. wants to be free. Yes. And, you know, Jesus, Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way. Yeah. And they have an encounter with his freedom in their heart. They can't deny that. Yeah. Outside forces are telling you something else, but on the inside, yep. you're experiencing the love of God. Yeah, definitely. Hey, shall we pray? Do you want to lead us oh, in I'd love prayer to. for this part of the world? Yeah, Steph? definitely. Definitely. Um, Heavenly Father, we, just, uh, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have here in New Zealand to go to church and have a Bible or 10 Bibles or read the Bible wherever we want to read it talk to, G- to people about Jesus wherever we want to talk to them um, and not have to worry about uh, being put in jail or worse. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, Lord, we're, we're grateful for that. But in that, in that freedom that we have, we also have a responsibility to pray for and care for these Christian brothers and sisters of ours in the Maldives in such a beautiful place in the world um, that they would be comforted in the midst of being such a small minority and all the things that they have to face as Christians and the fear that they must have of being found out or um, having somebody come to their house, knock on their door and, and take them to prison because they have a Bible. And so, Lord, we pray for them that you will give them a or one courage to stand up in the midst of that and to remain faithful to you. Um, and we also pray for the government that in the Maldives that you would um, give them soft hearts to be open to other religious um, people coming into their country and, and worshiping freely. 
And I pray for the the small amount of Christians that there are there that you will just continue to be their strength, be their hope, be their light, and give them opportunities to share um, and keep them safe when they do. And Lord, we just thank you so much for this. the Christians that are there. May they be a, an inspiration to us to live our faith um, because we can, loud, proud, and with gusto. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. I'll wrap your um, arms around these Christians. Uh, let your angels protect them from any harm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Steph. If you want to find out more about Barnabas Aid, the work they do, perhaps you'd like to support them in supporting the persecuted Christians around the world, go to the website, barnabasaid.org.nz, barnabasaid.org.nz. Steph Johnson, thanks for coming in. Look forward to catching up for you next time. Thanks, Lizzie. Good to be here again.